Welcome guys to Power Drift and our first impressions of the all new third generation Scorpio manufactured by none other than India's largest SUV maker Mahindra. Now in year 2002 Mahindra launched the Scorpio to be a cut above its own Bolero and the Scorpio went on for 12 years soldiered on to become its flagship SUV in its segment. From the outside, the third generation Scorpio, as you can see, looks a lot more beefier, a lot more aggressive. At the back, you might call it to be overdone, does end up looking a bit toyish, but I'm sure it will go on to grow on its target audience. Welcome addition to the new Scorpio is automatic headlamps, automatic rain sensing wipers, tyretronics which are essentially tire pressure sensors and also cornering lamps which Mahindra calls as advanced static bending technology. Sounds like a mouthful and when you google that term you find just about nothing to that effect. But yeah, what's changed in this is that there is an extra lamp which is turned into the corner already so there's nothing that moves on the go. The headlamps are projector headlamps, but they don't move. The turning radius of the all-new Scorpio has been reduced from 5.7 meters to 5.4 meters. But then that's for the two-wheel drive uh, Scorpio. The four-wheel drive Scorpio has increased turning radius of about 5.6 meters. Now the all-new Scorpio, it comes in two engine variants. That is the 2.5 liter diesel engine and the 2.2 liter diesel engine. The 2.5 liter diesel engine is more intended for rural purposes. It's got close to about 80 horses and 200 newton meters of torque and doesn't have a turbocharger. But then this one, the 2.2 liter diesel engine, the M Hawk one, it's got close to 118 horses and over 280 newton meters of torque thanks to its turbocharger, which is a lot more optimized now. The new Scorpio at the front has disc brakes, but at the back it still gets drum brakes. The Tata Storm, Safari Storm gets all four disc brakes. Um, the front suspension is independent suspension, double wishbone suspension, while the rear one is non-independent suspension, multi-link with anti-roll bars at the back. But the first impressions are that the body roll, as you see, is still quite a lot. Now, both the diesel engines are mated with 5-speed manual gearbox. Keep in mind that the Scorpio now doesn't get automatic gearbox and it doesn't even come with petrol so no Scorpio to be bought in petrol variant whatsoever. The gearbox is borrowed from the Mahindra Xylo. The steering wheel with audio controls and everything is borrowed from the XUV 500. There is a sea of changes on the inside of the new Scorpio. You get a touchscreen panel with uh, speakers at the front and then speakers right at the back. There are no center speakers in this car. The engine in the all-new Scorpio is the same. I'm not sure if it has been refined a whole lot, but then the NVH cabin quality is definitely improved. Now, the new Scorpio also comes with good tires, that is the Bridgestone Dueler, so that's good news. Now, the ergonomics of this car, uh, well, a certain few things are pretty annoying. For example, if I want to be reaching out to my door pocket, that is the driver's seat door pocket, then I possibly just can't insert my hand through this gap between the seat and the door. The long distance journeys, you can be relaxed with this armrest even for the driver's seat. The power window buttons in the older car were here on the center console. That's not the case in the new Scorpio. They are now mounted on the door. What you also get is one touch down auto power window a button here for the driver's seat. But not a whole lot of space has been discovered onto the inside with the new Scorpio. It's just about the same. Plastic quality on the inside has improved for the better, that's for sure. And a nice little Scorpio shiny metallic badging onto the inside gives the inside of this car a lot more identity than the older car. The instrument cluster is changed, looks a lot more pretty if you ask me with the neon blue colors which and the MID display housed between the two dials. It also has gear shift indicator and a lot more information like temperature, fuel gauge and uh, trip meter. The new Scorpio, it has improved chassis. The ride quality is really good. Now the clutch action is really light and the gear throws, you don't have to really be stretching yourself for that. You can be going over bumps as much as you want and uh, the car's gonna absorb them all. The only problem is handling in this car. 
uh, it really pitches and yaws a whole lot. And when you try to brake, well, the car does stop in time, but the brake pedal is a little spongy. The all new Scorpio also comes with a four wheel drive option. I'm currently driving the two wheel drive Scorpio. So can't really comment a whole lot on that, but you can switch the all new Scorpio into four wheel drive mode on the fly. The back seats are really upright, which kills the back seat comfort. You have a center armrest at the back, but really it is so low down that you just have to scoop down to take any support from that. If you know the old Scorpio, then you know that when you're into turns, taking a left or a right, there is something always banging at the back. One would initially think that it's a water bottle shifting places from right to left, but that's not really the case. I don't know why they don't fix that. Once again, you'll have that sound now, left. There it is, left sound. I don't know if you're able to hear that, but it's just plain annoying. We haven't really had a whole lot of time to spend with the new Scorpio, but an in-depth comprehensive review should follow in the weeks to come. Do remember to subscribe to Power Drift. Goodbye.